All right, guys, I'm back doing a little teaching on the word righteousness. Um, I'm going to start off, um, you know, in Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. And I wanted to tell you all that uh, this series is going to be breaking, busting chains of legalism, pharmaceutical spirits and stuff like that. And uh, just 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 stay tuned and keep paying attention. There's a lot of stuff. It's all I, I, I like to preach in context, keep it biblical at the bible interpret the bible and uh and go from there but anyways i'm gonna start off with matthew 27 19 and he says when he's when he is talking about Pilate, Pilate and Pilate's wife right here and Pilate's wife sees that jesus even she could see he's a righteous man which a lot of people knew but i want i want to get into it look what it says when he sat down on the judgment seat his wife and it's talking about Pilate and his wife his wife sent unto him saying have have nothing to do with this righteous man, she said. For I have suffered many things this day in a in a dream because of him. She had a vision of him. She she had she had a dream of him. And uh, I, what I'm focusing on here is the word righteous. It says that she had, she told her husband, "Don't have nothing to do with this righteous man." And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I want y'all to get to understand that your righteousness. Is not of your good works, your good deeds, um, the things you don't do, the things that you do. It's you, you're righteous because Jesus was righteous. Okay, we all know Jesus had no sin. We all know that, right? But the Bible says that Jesus became sin. How did he do that? Because there was a transfer. He took all of our sins, and we take his righteousness. And I'm going to share with you that. Let's go to let's go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Let's let the Bible let's let the Bible interpret the Bible. I'm gonna go to Second Corinthians five twenty one. And uh that says this for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, for that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Right there it is. Look, Second Corinthians five twenty one it says, For he hath made him to to be sin for us. So Jesus never sinned, but he became sin for us. He took our sin. He took your sin. He took it. It's no longer in you. Yeah, you might think it. You might. It's stuffed. It's still in there. But it, look, look, it says, come to him. Look what Jesus says. It says, it says that he is the, the bread of life. He keeps feeding you. If, if let, let, let him feed you enough that it washes that bad stuff out of your of your mind and in your in your conscience and everything else like that. But it, I'm sorry. Let me let me get back to this. Second Corinthians five twenty one says, "For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him." See, your righteousness comes from him. Remember that it's your your righteousness is a, it, it come, you, you receive it as a gift. Remember when you hear the word righteousness, think gift. Because that's what it is. It's awesome. And once you understand that, look, it says, uh, it says, first, the, the scriptures say, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. Okay? Everybody seeks the kingdom of God, right? And it's Jesus and his righteousness. A lot of people don't know how to seek his righteousness. What is his righteousness? I'm showing you. And, and once you get it, and once you get it in you, everything will come flowing into you, into your life. It'll flow like a flood. It'll come to you. Everything will come. But focus on Him. Keep your eyes on Him. It's not on yourself. It's not a church. It's not this and that. I'm not saying not to go to church. I'm saying it's Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. It's Jesus. It's all Jesus. It's not nothing to do with self. So let's go to Jeremiah 23.6. Jeremiah 23.6, guys. Give all honor and glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jeremiah 23, 6. Okay, I'm almost there, guys. Beautiful morning out here in Portales, New Mexico. Okay, uh, Jeremiah 23, 6 says, uh, it says, in, the day, in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And in this is... And this is his name, whereby we will be, where, where he shall be called, the righteous, 
the Lord our righteousness. N let me read that again. I'm sorry, I have a bunch of notes and a bunch of writing here, so I'm having to... Okay, it says, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name where he shall be called. And look what it says, The Lord our righteousness. Right there. The Lord our righteousness. He is our righteousness. He is our righteousness. It's his obedience. It's his. It's everything he did. It's it's how perfect Jesus as, as Jesus is, so are you in this world, the scripture says. It says, as we as he is, so are we in this world. It says here on earth, on this world. Jesus ain't sick. Jesus ain't in poverty. I mean, come on. Come on. Somebody's getting this here. Somebody's understanding this here. Come on, let it flow in. Let it let it click on you. Now, after that, I want to go to Jeremiah 23, 4. And it says, look, you're going to hear, and I'm going to show you why I'm saying this. You're going to hear pastors saying, well, God's mad and this and that if you do this, if you do bad and this and this, and he's an angry God and he's a just God. and all. Well, yes, he is. Yes, he is. But you got to remember, he, Jesus is God and he is. This, he is. You got to remember what he told the woman that was caught in adultery. He says, where's your accuser's daughter? And she said, there is none. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. How was he able to say that? Because he knew he would take her sins later on at the cross. But look, uh, Jeremiah 23, 4 says, And I will, I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Now look, guys, he says, I will set up shepherds. What is he talking about? Pastors preaching the truth of Jesus Christ, speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching it and teaching it to the world. Look what he says there. I will set up shepherds over them. That, that shall feed them, not beat them, feed them, feed them truth. You cannot tell the body of Christ that God's angry with them and mad with them and all this. No, Jesus took all the punishment at the cross. He took all your sin. He took all the God's wrath. That's why God is, that's why he says, in my son who I am well pleased, he says. He says, remember that? This is my son, hear him. Do you remember that? Now listen, now listen, listen, listen here. And look, look what it says about us, the people. Look what it says. And they shall fear no more. We shall fear no more, it says. The scripture says in Jeremiah 23, 4, that we shall fear no more. So why are these pastors preaching that God is angry and mad at the, at the, at the body of Christ when they sin? Teach them that they're righteous conscious. Keep, show, teach them this and I guarantee you they'll pull them out of sin. Sin will have no dominion over them because they are not under law but under grace. Quit trying to go back to the law to scare people to back to God. No, no. You put them in bondage when you do that. You put them in, 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 in they, they go out of church in fear. They go to, to, to Bible studies in fear. They, they pray in fear. No, Jesus is love. The Bible def defines God as love. Teach the truth. There is no fear in love because perfect love casts out all fear. When, when you read that scripture, put Jesus in there instead of love. Look, there is no fear in Jesus because perfect Jesus casts out all fear. All glory to Jesus. Do you get that? Now look. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. How You don't want to be dismayed or thinking, oh man, I, I, God, I blew it. I blew it. God's mad at me. I can't. He, no, 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 no. How do you know that? No, no. It's not because of what I did wrong. I, I'm still right with God. Look, look. I'm going to share with y'all something important. Okay. Now look. It says, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Now look. When Peter, fe P look, Peter did all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. He denied Jesus three times and all this stuff. But look, there's a scripture that says that Jesus tells Peter that Satan has asked for him. But it said, look, I prayed that your faith would not fail, he told Peter. He didn't say, I prayed that you wouldn't fail, Peter, because Peter will fall. We're human. We fall. We're man. He said, I pray that your faith would not, f would not fail. Now look. That's why it's it's our faith. Look, we put our faith that we are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. That is doing that. That's giving Jesus all the glory. You're not trying to so you're not trying to take glory for self. You're not trying to. You, you can't be self righteous. That oh, I fasted twenty days. I'm holy. No, no, no. And, and if you think that fasting is for 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 God, it's that's not true. Fasting is for you. Fasting is for you. Study the scriptures on that. Um, Okay, but before I get off track on something else, I, I want to keep this going. Peter, Jesus told Peter, I prayed that your faith would not fail. Now look, that's, that's, that's important because look, it says that what's the only thing that pleases God? It's faith. 
his faith, right? Now look, I'm going to uh, share with you the scripture in John, 1 John 5, 4. Let me get it real quick. 1 John 5, 4. I love speaking about the Lord. He has showed me all this stuff a while back, and it's just awesome. And uh, I'm, I'm happy I get to share it, share the word. I, I'm just so full of it, um, of of the goodness of the Lord, of His mercies. Thank, and, and you know what? I want to thank you, Lord, for your mercy, for the flood of mercy that you just bestow on us. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm going to First John five four, and it says, "For who." For whoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this victory, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. That says even our faith. So look, it's your faith, guys. It's your faith. Look, let me, let me say it again in a different translation. It says, for every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. We achieve this victory through our faith, guys. Our faith in what? Our faith in Jesus, the finished work of the cross, the blood of Jesus, everything that he has done for us. When he says he, it is finished, he took it. He took it. Remember, I shared with you in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says that Jesus became sin, but we all know he never sinned, but he became sin. That's the loving, mercy, mer, that's the loving gracious, merciful God that we serve. Okay, guys, look. If you can't understand this yet, you, you ask the Holy Spirit to help you. But I know that there is people out there that could feel it here and feel it here that, you know, that's right. I know God loves me, but what, but why is this? Why is that? You know why? It's because you've been hearing a lot of mixture. People preaching that God's angry when, they're, when they do bad and that he's happy when they do good. That cannot be true. And Psalms 94, 19 says this. It says, when doubt filled my mind, your comfort, uh, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer what it says so look when you're doubting in your mind look what it says look what it says when you're doubting right now what i'm preaching to you look what it says your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer so i didn't take i didn't tell you anything that's not in the bible look at that it's it, I, I share with you the scripture second corinthians 5 21 jesus took all jesus took all our sins so we become his righteous we, we're righteous we took his righteousness so when Jesus looks at you today, he has not seen you in your sin. He has seen Jesus. Because Je it's, look, how can, how can God punish you for sin that Jesus already took? He, just, he don't do that because he is a just God. He cannot lie. Jesus already took it. Jesus took all, 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 all the punishment. Jesus took it all. And if you don't believe it, read 1 John. Jesus died for all, all of our sins, not just some. All, it says. Matthew 27, 19. Look at that, man. That woman knew. She said, "Have not." She told her husband, "Have nothing to do with that righteous man." She, she, she even she knew. But anyways, guys, I just thought I would share this with you. I wanted to break this down a little bit with you. I will be back tomorrow morning. I gotta get ready for the day. I gotta hit the gym. God bless you. May God continue to bless you. And all glory to Jesus.